Okay, so in reality, we tend to have problems that combine all these operations together. And what that means is that we've got to use all of our rules uh, in conjunction and as we just learned, we need to keep track of our significant figures throughout. So let's practice the problems uh, or go over this, the, the solutions for the problems that you practiced and, and make sure you um, understand why the answers are what they are. So in the first one, we we're doing some addition and some division. So order of operations tells us that we want to do the addition before we do our division, right? So step one, let's do the addition of the numerator first. So we want to do that vertically. We've got 2.34 milligrams and 0 0.34. If we drew our line, our arrows, they would both come here to our 4. So we add those up, we get 8, 6, 2. Nothing to have to round. That's nice. Let's do our denominator. Set that up vertically. Again, our arrows are going to end up at the same spot because that zero is significant since it's after a decimal point. We get four. Three point two four. Nothing to have to round. So we've got our uh, numerator and our denominator. That brings us to step two, where we do 2.68 milligrams divided by 3.24 milliliters. Count our sig figs. We got three on the top and three on the bottom. That makes this a fairly simple problem. Just do 2.68 divided by 3.24. I get 0 0.8271604. Three sig figs. Seven. Look to the one. We keep it the same. 0 0.827 milligrams per milliliter. That is density. And there you have it. There was no reason to have to even worry about uh, keeping track of our sig figs because in each step of our um, pointers here, in each step of our um, addition and subtraction, there was nothing after where we drew our vertical line, which is nice. So that one worked out very easily. All right, let's move on to our, our next problem. I'm going to erase these so we don't get confused with our numbering.
Okay. So this is a scenario that can easily happen when you're working in, in a lab, trying to find the density of water is something we do a lot at a certain temperature because it changes. Um, so what do we do? Order of operations says addition and, uh, and subtraction first in this case. So we'll do our addition. Again, just like the first one, we'll do our numerator. Do it with A instead of numbers. That's confusing. So we got 100, 140, 141. Now, looks to me like these students were using different um, pieces of equipment with different levels of accuracy. Remember, don't let those zeros fool you. So, vertical line's got to come all the way down to here because of that 100. So we do our addition. We've got 1, 8, 3, and this is grams. Let's do our denominator. Again, different mass balances of different levels of accuracy and precision. So it's pretty clear that we're going to have to draw our vertical line here. Decimal point, 5, make that more prominent. Say 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 422.5 milliliters. All right. Part B, division. So here, this is where we want to be careful because we don't actually want to round these numbers yet, right? We want to keep track of our sig figs but we don't want to round to the end. So it is 381 grams divided by 422.5 milliliters and one sig fig divided by three sig figs. Pull our calculator out. 381 divided by 422.5. You get 0 0.9017751. So, how many sig figs? Well, one, right? So, we look to the right, keep it the same, 0 0.9 grams per milliliter would be our density of water. Now, let's just, for the sake of doing, showing, um, showing it, um, let's see what would happen if we didn't follow those rules. Well, here, we would round this to 400, and here we would round that, let's see, two, we would keep it the same because of our 5 rule, right? This would be 422. And so we would divide 400 by 422, right? And then we'd look and we'd still see one sig fig, okay? So 400... And we get 0 
four seven. So we'd still get we would still get the same answer in this case, and we'd get lucky. Sometimes you will get lucky, but what if this answer? What if one of the students, you know, had uh, an even less accurate mass balance, and you know, this was let's say, let's see, less accurate or more accurate, or maybe even a more accurate mass balance, and these numbers changed, and this number became even lower. Okay, and we got something like four. I don't know, 20 or something like that. Let's see, will that change it? It would. It would make it 0 0.1, or gosh, we'd have to round it up one more. It would make it 1. And there, our answer is off. If we change that. So, it Sometimes you'll get lucky if you mess up your rounding rules, but until the very end. You want to never, ever, ever round the rule until the very end. Is the rule that we want to follow. Okay? So, follow those rules, and you'll get the right answer every single time. Practice, practice, practice.